Are you one of these unfortunate people that wake up in the morning, late for work, jump in the car, turn that key, and you hear nothing? Battery's completely flat. Well, if you're one of these people, then stick around, because we're going to be talking about the NOCO GB50 Boost XL. Let's get into it. All right, so let's start off by talking about what's included in the pack. So here it is. This is the microfiber bag that comes with the pack. Inside, we obviously get the NOCO GB50 Boost XL battery. We get the heavy duty cables. We get a USB to micro USB charger. Instructions manual. And a 12 volt 6 socket charger. The microfiber bag. So for those of you that don't know, I currently have a 2016 Ford Ranger Wildtrak which has the 3.2 litre diesel engine. So if none of you have heard of NOCO, NOCO do a number of different models to suit your vehicle, depending on what size engine you've got, whether it be petrol or diesel. So for this particular model, the GB50, this can go up to a 7 litre petrol engine or a 4.5 litre diesel engine. The next model down from this particular one is the GB40. Now the GB40 can do up to a 6 litre petrol engine or a 3 litre diesel engine. You're probably wondering why did I not go for the GB40? Well, my engine is actually a 3.2 and NOCO claim that they can only go up to a 3 litre engine. It'd be interesting to know if there's anybody out there that currently have the GB40 and have been able to start their 3.2 litre diesel engine. Please leave that in the comments below. Not for my benefit because I've already purchased my NOCO, but for all those other people out there, if they can get the GB40 instead of the GB50 because they're going to save themselves $70 by doing that. Now I purchased the GB50 for $250. I purchased mine on Amazon in Australia and for the GB40 it'll cost you around about $180. So you're saving yourself around $70. So the GB50 does come with a 35 watt hour battery inside which is a lithium ion battery and it is rated at 1500 amps. That's at its peak. So if your battery is completely flat and you have to use the boost mode, which I'll go into later, then basically that will put in 1500 amps worth of power to try and get your battery started. Now there are a couple of ways that you can actually charge this device. You can charge it via the six socket that goes into your car. And they claim that that will take up to about 4.5 hours to do a complete charge on the flat. You can also charge this via a 240 volt plug um, any plug that basically has a USB slot can be charged via that. Now the 12 volt 6 charger that they provide is only rated at 2 amps. So if you've got a basically say a 4 or 5 amp plug then you're basically going to cut your charging time in half. They claim that once you've charged this it will not need charging for at least one year. Now I purchased my one back in September last year, so I've had mine roughly around about seven or eight months now. I charged mine as soon as I got it, and it's basically been sat in my car since. I haven't had to use it yet. So let's switch it on and see what my uh, battery capacity is at the moment. So you simply just switch it on. Hopefully you guys can see that. But it should be, yeah, so it's showing three bars there. The last bar right at the end there will be green. They go up in 25% increments. So I'm currently at 75%. So in the seven to eight months that I've owned it, never used it, it's still at 75%. So that's pretty good. So let's take a look at the inputs and the outputs that are on the device. So as you can see in the USB app, you can put any USB cable inside there. 
you have a USB in. The USB in is obviously to charge the device. That will be with the uh, micro USB cable that comes in the pack. And then on the opposite end, you've got your 12 volt out. That's where your heavy duty cables go. So a great feature on this device is that you get a 200 lumen LED light and it has seven light modes. All you do is just continue to press the button and it'll go through all different light modes. This is obviously a great feature if you break down at night time. Now there are a few warning signs that come with the device. <laughs> You've got what looks like a snow crystal snowflake on there. You get a heat symbol with a plus sign and a warning sign. Now the snowflake sign basically is to inform you that the battery is too cold at the moment. So when you connect it, you just need to give it time to heat up. So that light would come on if that is too cold. The other light, the, the temperature light, is basically if it overheats. So if you try and start your vehicle multiple times with no success, then basically it's going to overheat. And that's why that kicks in to prevent any damage to the battery. And the warning sign is basically if you put the cables on the wrong sides of the uh, battery. So you put the negative to the positive and the positive to the negative. So another great feature with this is that it's classed as a battery bank. So you can charge your smartphone, you can charge an iPad, you can charge headphones, you can even charge a laptop, as long as it can be done via a USB port. So any cable or any smart device that you have that supports a USB slot, you should be good to go. NOCO claim that you can charge your smartphone approximately six times with this battery bank. So with the GB50, NOCO claim that you can jump start your vehicle approximately 30 times from this particular device. And the numbers either go lower or higher depending on what model you get as to how many jump starts you might be able to get. Another fantastic feature with NOCO is that it has a built-in spark proof technology and reverse polarity protection which I will show you when we connect it to the battery. I did forget to mention as well that this is actually dust proof and water resistant. Alright, let's get this thing turned on and show you the features. So like I said earlier, the 12 volt out is where your jump leads need to be connected to. So I'd like to show you some of the safety features that I was mentioning earlier. So if you're going to do this with any other jump leads, if you're connected to another vehicle and then bring the leads over to your battery from that vehicle, if you connect the positive and the negative together, you're going to get a big spark. So this is what I'm talking about when it says about the spark proof. So as you can see there, there's no spark. If you look at the device, you'll see that the warning light has come on. So it's obviously indicating to me that there's a fault somewhere. So I either need to check the battery pack or check the leads. And the same goes when you put the leads onto the battery terminal. So let's put the negative onto the positive side. And the positive to the negative side. So hopefully you can see that again there guys. It's come up with another warning sign. So it's just such a great feature to have. Because sometimes we can make mistakes but it's not going to do any damage to the battery or to your vehicle. All right, so let me put the leads on the correct way. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see that, that, that the light at the top here is flashing from bottom to top. So from, from bottom red to top green. That's basically telling me that my battery is good to go and that I can pretty much have a crack at starting this engine if I had a flat battery. Now, if for some reason that isn't flashing and it's completely all still, so all lights are illuminated but it's not moving and, and the boost light isn't lit, then that's when we need to use the boost mode. Now there's a major warning here when you use the boost mode. The boost mode should only be used if the device detects that the battery itself is less than two volt. The only other concern 
is you need to make sure that the terminals and the leads are correctly positioned. Once you activate that boost mode, all those safety mechanisms go out of the window. So let's say I put the terminals on the wrong way and I need to press that boost button and I haven't seen the warning sign there, then basically you're gonna do some damage. And the same goes if you press that boost button and you haven't connected the uh, leads to the terminals yet and you basically accidentally touch the positive and the negative leads, to get leads together, then it's gonna create a spark which could potentially damage the battery jump starter. So please, 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 if you are gonna use this boost function, then just be aware that you need to take precaution because all those safety mechanisms are no longer existent. Okay, so let's pretend that I've got a flat battery at this point in time, and it's higher than two volts. So let's say it's reading around about 10 volts, but it's just not enough to kick over my vehicle. So the first thing that you need to do is connect the cables to the battery Next thing we do is push the on button, keep your finger on it, and the lights will come up. The next thing that we need to make sure that we do is to make sure that we don't have any lights on in the vehicle, the aircon is switched off, and that the radio is switched off. Just make sure that anything in the car that can pretty much drain a battery is all switched off. We need to give this battery and the battery pack the best chance it can to start the vehicle the first time around. So once you've started your vehicle, the next thing you need to do is basically come outside, turn the device off, and disconnect the leads from the battery terminals. I guess at that point you would look at the battery status on the actual device itself. If it's still showing 100% because you started it the first time, then there's no need to recharge it. If it's gone down a significant amount, then yes, that's where we probably need to uh, connect it via the SIG socket or go inside and do a 240 volt charge on the battery pack. So let's talk about why you may want to look into buying one of these. So for those of you that don't know, I'm currently, so me and my family are currently traveling around Australia. The last thing I wanted was to be stuck in the middle of nowhere and accidentally have a flat battery. That's why I personally wanted to purchase one of these for my vehicle. Okay everyone, I hope that's helped you deciding on what particular jump starter battery you want. If you like this particular video then please don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and press that notification button so you're notified next time I put a video up. Thanks for watching guys, take it easy, see you on the next one.